I just decided randomly to film today and of course I start sneezing violently the minute that the camera is turned on. Oh, that's the way that it goes, right? Um, it's either that or a fire truck is going or kids are screaming. I just, I can't win, you know? Um, so yes, as you can tell from the title of the video, I'm doing the try a chapter tag again. Like I'm not actually doing it as a tag who does these days. Uh, but it's been such a long time since I did this and I, I love doing it. And I realized that I had five books on my physical TBR shelf that are old and I've never cracked them open. Everything else that I have, I know I am still interested in. I've tried to read before and just haven't finished it yet or they're all new books. So this, this stack of five, are good candidates for a try a chapter video just to see if I do want to read these things and if I don't do I want to get rid of them or do I want to wait for another day. So I'm just going to dive in and show you what these books are. The first is Mainline by Deborah Teramis Christian. I've mentioned this book on so many readathon TBRs and yet I have never actually started reading it before. This is my friend Tara's favorite book and she sent me this copy that she found like three years ago and I'm feeling really bad because I still haven't gotten around to it. I don't know if it will be my thing or not. I think it's a little bit cyberpunky, but I'm, I'm going to try it and I don't remember anything about it. I'm not going to give you any descriptions of what the books are about because I don't actually know. The next one is Armistice by Laura Elena Donnelly. I read the first book in the series, Amber Low, years ago. It was a favorite book and then I got the sequel from the publisher and I never read it. I feel really guilty about that. Um, I keep thinking that I should really want to read this book because I love the first book so much. And yet at the same time, I kind of feel like it's passed me by. I was interested in it, but not so much now. And I think I should just read the first chapter to see if my interest will reignite or if I am really just done with it for now and I can get rid of this. And then I have three Masterworks books, which I'm not going to get rid of because I collect these. Um, but once again, I've never actually tried to read them before. So I have The Continuous Catherine Morton Ho by DG Compton. I got this, oh my god, I think I got this back in like 2017. I think I got it in a booktube SFF Christmas swap. Yeah, it's been a long time. I don't even really remember. Um, and I always intended to just sit down and read it right away, but never did. I, I think I got in my head that this was like a really dark book and I had to be prepared for it. And I don't know if it really is like that or not. And then one that I bought impulsively because I was in a real John Crowley phase is Engine Summer. Not, once again, I have never actually tried to read it. Um, I think I will probably really like this. I think it's probably John Crowley entering into his more atmospheric stage and that is his work that I do really enjoy. So there's this one. And then I have my very last fantasy masterwork left to read. Though there is one other book in the fantasy masterwork line that I've never actually been able to find, but it is listed on Golance's site, so it must really exist. But I tried to read that book. I think it was The Anvil of Ice. I had a different edition of it. I tried to read it in an old Try a Chapter tag video. I'm never actually going to read that one unless I get the actual Fantasy Masterwork edition. So with that, The Dragon Grial by Lucia Shepard is my last Fantasy Masterwork to read. And once again, I've never cracked it open. I believe, based on what it lists on the back here, is that this is actually a collection of six novellas that are probably related in some way. I'm going to guess it has to do with dragons because of the title. And that is all that I know. So, over the next day or two, I'm going to read the first chapter. Sometimes I read the first two or three chapters and make up my mind about what I want to do next with these books. And you get to come along with me. All right, I'm back with some thoughts on Mainline by Deborah Teramis Christian. This has very short chapters, so I actually just read the first 20 pages and that's about 10 numbered chapters. And this isn't quite what I expected. I thought it was gonna be like a real cyberpunk novel set on Earth, but instead it's got a slightly different feel to it. And there's mention of like this empire with multiple planets and aliens and everything. And that is far more interesting to me. 
Um, so, so far it is about a woman named Riva who is an assassin and is able to kind of see alternate timelines and like hop over to them or something and she of course uses this ability to kill people. Um, she has been asked to assassinate a very important man who has just hired a bodyguard because he knows somebody's after him. The bodyguard also seems to have a point of view in the story. He's an alien. And I got up to the point where Riva has made her first attempt and kind of sort of encountered the alien bodyguard. And that's as far as I've gotten. So I think I'm going to give this another 20 pages because it's I don't know if I would have picked this up on my own, it's not quite my thing, but I want to give it a little bit more time to see if it'll hook my interest a bit more. So I will read more and have a second round of thoughts on this one. It is now the next day and I've read two chapters of Armistice by Laura Elena Donnelly and I think I'm going to let this one go. Uh, the first two chapters were from Cordelia's point of view and I did remember her because she was a main character in the previous book. And then the other one was from Lillian, I think, and I did not remember her at all. Apparently she's Cyril's sister. This just threw so many names and places and references to various events at me. I It didn't ring a bell. <laughs> Usually when I come back to a world after being away for a while, things start to rush back after a couple of chapters, but nope. And I just, like, even even though it's well written and it was very readable, I didn't care enough, so I don't think I'm going to continue on with this right now. I'm going to get rid of this copy, and if I ever feel like revisiting the series, I'll get it from the library. I also took some more time to read another 25 pages or so of Mainline, and I decided I'm going to continue with this one. I really don't know what it's about, and it seems to have a lot more point of view characters than I expected. We're up to three now, <laughs> um, but I'm a little hooked, I guess, on how all the characters' paths will cross and what is going on with the main character Riva's ability. Um, it has introduced psionic powers and that is one of my least favorite things in science fiction, but despite that, I do think it's relatively interesting. So I'm going to continue reading little bits of this and I'll probably give some further updates on my thoughts on it as I'm going through the rest of these books. It is now much later on a different day. We have terrible lighting because it's the evening and there's no natural light left. Let's talk about the last three of these books in no particular order. So first up, The Continuous Catherine Mordenhoe by D.G. Compton. This is from the 1970s and it's basically like a future imagining of what reality TV would be like. <laughs> Um, and I'm pretty sure that the book is going to follow a like middle-aged woman who finds out she has a terminal illness in a world where that really isn't a thing anymore and she like agrees to have her like the last days of her life broadcasted to everybody. I think that's what's going on. The first chapter was mostly just an introduction. Of, I didn't read the entire thing. It was super long. I read like 15 pages of it and got to a good uh, stopping point. Um, I think this is going to be pretty interesting actually. I, I like the writing, but because the main character is dealing with like, you know, a fatal medical condition, I just cannot read that right now. I am not in the headspace to read about any sort of medical health stuff. So this is going to go back on the bookshelf <laughs> for right now. Next is Engine Summer by John Crowley. And this one took me aback a little bit. I was very confused by it. I think it's like a dystopian or like a post-apocalyptic novel but a long time after the event has happened and it read much like a fantasy novel where a whole world and its own terminology are introduced and nothing's really explained so there's a lot of vocabulary a lot of references I did not understand in the first chapter and it was pretty intriguing I would like to continue on but my first impression was that it felt like a fantasy novel, not like science fiction, and I want science fiction. So I don't think I'm really in the right headspace for this one either because it was just so confusing. It's going to take a lot of energy <laughs> probably to get through the beginning of this book, and that's not really what I'm in the mood for. But the last one is a real winner, and that is The Dragon Grail by Lucia Shepard. This is a collection of six novellas, and so I went into this thinking 
that this was going to be typical epic fantasy with real mythic dragons, you know, cliches. And it's not. <laughs> the dragon is 6,000 feet long, has been immobilized by a spell that might have gone wrong, and is now part of the landscape. So it just, it's, this dragon is literally like part of the hills and the valleys and stuff. There's like a forest growing on part of it. And the people who live like in the town near Grial have wanted him to die for a long time, but he's like an immortal dragon and how are they gonna kill him? Whoever tried before only managed to immobilize him. And in the first story, which I read the first portion of, a young painter comes to the town and is like, I propose that you spend a lot of money for me to paint the dragon so that after a couple of decades, the dragon will die from like toxic poisoning from all the stuff in the paint. <laughs> I'm not sure if the painter intended for this to be a serious idea or if he's just trying to get money from the town or something, but it was just kind of ludicrous. Um, I also gather from the introduction to this edition that the stories progress over time. They begin in kind of a slightly alternate 1850s, and I think they go all the way up to the modern day. The most recent one, and this was uh, published in 2012, I think. So it's way more recent than I had thought it was. So yeah, I'm actually quite on fire to read more of this and find out more about the dragon and what happens to it. I'm assuming that since there are other stories, they don't actually kill the, the dragon with toxic pigments, but we're gonna find out. So I'm very glad that I finally started this and it was nothing at all like what I expected. So this one I will continue with. So out of this batch, that leaves me with one that I'm getting rid of because I'm not really interested in it anymore. And then two that are going back on the shelf for right now. And then another two that I plan on reading sooner rather than later. I don't have mainline right with me. It's probably in my bedroom or something. Uh, so I think that's pretty darn good, especially for a batch of five books that I had never even cracked open over the last three four years. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. And it is always fun to just sit there and read a whole bunch of first chapters and not feel like you have to finish any of them. <laughs> so this was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. A little bit of a look at these books. And yeah, I'll wrap it up there and we'll be back to talk to you again, maybe about some of these that I actually finish in the near future. And until then, bye.